Our guest today needs no introduction. He's a cultural icon who has led the fight to protect our First Amendment rights for 50 years. His magazine, Playboy, has been viewed as the world's best-selling men's lifestyle magazine. I'd like to welcome Hugh Hefner to Sidewalks. Welcome to Sidewalks. Hef, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you, Cindy. So tell me a little bit about your life growing up in Chicago. Did, were you raised in a family that had some pretty liberal ideas about life? No, quite the contrary. I was raised in a very typical Midwestern Methodist home with a lot of repression. Um, my folks were essentially Puritan. Uh, and my heritage is Puritan, going all the way back to uh, uh, the, the, the Mayflower with uh, William Bradford. Uh, and I think that it was, a re it was a result in response to that, quite frankly, that I, I charted a different course for, my, for myself. And I think that uh, my life and uh, the creation of Playboy magazine was um, a response to that repression. Well, the rise of Playboy, I think, really represents the best of sort of American mentality and gumption. And I I'd love it if you tell the story about how the magazine got off the ground. Well, it was 1953, uh, and uh, I wanted to start a magazine of my own. And all the men's magazines after World War II uh, were outdoor adventure magazines. And I wasn't interested in that. I wanted to create a magazine for young uh, urban males. Uh, and um, that was the notion behind Playboy, but of course I didn't have any money. I literally put my furniture in hock uh, and raised $600 and, and borrowed a few hundred dollars here and there from friends and relatives. I actually went to my father and asked him if he would invest. He was a good conservative businessman and declined. My mother took me aside and gave me $1,000, the, la the largest investment at that point. Uh, in the in the company, and she didn't really believe in the magazine, but she believed in her son. Uh, I, I launched the magazine on eight thousand uh, wow. dollars, and uh, it was just enough to put out one issue. It had no date on it, but it caught on immediately, and here we are, fifty-five years later, uh, at the Playboy Mansion. And of course, Marilyn Monroe was on the, gracing the cover <clears throat> of that very first magazine. How fun was that? Well, I needed something special because I had no way to promote the magazine, so I needed something special. And I found out that a calendar company in Chicago, out near the, the west side of Chicago, close to where I lived, uh, had this nude picture, a calendar picture, that everybody would heard about but nobody would seen. And nobody would seen it because the post office took the position that you couldn't send nudity through the mail. And I'm the kid who didn't believe the post office had that right. And, <laughs> How do you think that uh, Playboy has influenced sexuality in America as well as the rest of the world? Well, I think that Playboy was there at the very beginning and did play a very real role in uh, what became known as the, the sexual revolution. Uh, and um, I started writing an a, uh, editorial series called The Playboy Philosophy in 1962, trying to make a case for what became the sexual revolution, and the revolution really arrived in full blast in the middle 60s, 65, 66. And, um, you know, part of it was a reflection of the fact that uh, the world was ready for it. Part of it also was the birth of the, uh, of the or the uh, invention of the birth control pill in 1960. Uh, but I think the Playboy was there making the case for sexual and personal freedom uh, from the very early 50s. Well, you're being uh, honored by Spike TV, of course, with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, how do you feel about that, and, and are you excited the about the event? Of our lifetime, Mr. Hugh well, the whole, the, the whole show, I must say, is, is a great, a, a lot of fun, very entertaining. Uh, and uh, there are a number of other people who will also be there. Robert Downey Jr., Matt Damon, uh, Harrison Ford. I'm in very good company. And uh, receiving the, the Lifetime Achievement Award, uh, for the ultimate alpha male is, is a real honor. Uh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to take you back a few years to the time when, you know, most people may not realize that you were once the host of an entertainment television show called Playboy at Night. Do you Playboy remember that dark. time uh, with fond memories? And uh, were there any special guests during that time that uh, you were most excited to have on the show? Well, the show began in Chicago, actually, in, in 59 and 60, called Playboy's Penthouse, and then a later version of it here, out here in L.A. 
called Playboy After Dark in uh, 68 and 69. And the, the conceit of the show was that it was a, a, a party uh, in my apartment. And uh, the, the, the audience actually came a, as a guest. Uh, the subjective camera came up the elevator and into the apartment. And I welcomed them. And, then, and they had a chance to uh, be a part of that entertainment package that included uh, great entertainers. Uh, and everybody was there. On the very first show that we did in Chicago, uh, we had um, Lenny Bruce, uh, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, and Nat King Cole. Uh, nice. Good people. Nice. Excellent. Well, I got to tell you, one of my very favorite shows that are current day, of course, are The Girls Next Door. I tell you, those girls must keep you hopping. <laughs> <laughs> You're a very well, lucky man. I am a very lucky man. And... Uh, we didn't certainly didn't expect that that show would turn out to be so hugely popular with women, not only in America but around the world. It's it's uh, over seventy percent of the audience is female. Well, do you find that the cameras are a bit intrusive though at times? Do you ever wish that they just go away? Well, you get used to it. And to be perfectly frank, uh, I had mixed emotions about doing the show in the beginning. Uh, the fact that we are now in our fifth season or working wow. on our fifth season, is uh, remarkable, and um, the show just keeps getting more and more popular. Hef, as we close, when you look back on your career, what do you want people to remember most about you? I'd like to remember, be remembered as uh, somebody who played some positive part in changing the social sexual values of his time and had a very good time doing it. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today on Sidewalks, Hef. It was a pleasure meeting you. My pleasure. Thank you, Cindy.